to the school board meeting on Tuesday, May 13th, 2003. And if we could begin by the Pledge of Allegiance, if everyone would stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, first order of business is adjustments to the agenda. Um, I have one adjustment uh, in 11 in unfinished business. I um, will be moving the consideration of recommendation to athletic fee positions for winter of 2003 and 2004 up above um, the superintendent's report. So after student recognition. Um, the approval of the school board minutes from the last school board meetings, from the last school board meeting and several executive sessions. Are there approved? Okay. Um, and now we can move on to comments from our high school students. Um, regular classes are over for seniors right now, which means that the senior transition projects have started. And the SDP um, actually kicked off this morning with a breakfast, but I think it's a great way to give back to the community and transition into college or whatever you're doing after high school. Um, spring sports are up and running, and literally running the track, but <laughs> there's a meet Friday. Um, many students took the AP exams this uh, past week, which shows high learning in Cape Elizabeth. And another thing that I think shows high learning is all these uh, Latin students who are being recognized for doing well on the national Latin exam. So I think they should get uh, congratulations to them. Uh, I'd like to um, please to present that the seniors did not damage too much this year with pranks. And I'm proud of my class for that. Um, band concerts last week finished off a great year of music, and if you did band four years, you get a varsity letter in music. I think that's great. Prom is this Friday, and people are getting excited for that. That should be good. I just wanted to thank you for listening to me this whole year. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Middle school students? Oh, sorry. Do you know what ping is? What's that? Ping. Ping. No, ping is the sound of hair growing. You'll find out real soon. Good luck. <laughs> Hi, I'm Elise Winnie Roberts. And I'm Elise Maloney. Today, three of the fifth grade classes went on a field trip to Portland to visit the slave ship, the Amistad, and from what I heard, they had a great time. Also, the whole fifth grade has raised about $400 to support the Heifer program, which um, they send livestock to third world country families. And they also had their social two Fridays ago, and that was great. <laughs> Um, seventh and eighth graders, they're having a concert tomorrow night, and on um, Thursday they'll have one for the school during school. Um, for seventh and eighth grade, there's also the last dance, May 30th. Um, for seventh grade, they're t turning in their laptops, and they're getting ready to turn them in late May or early June. For eighth grade, um, we're doing a community service project next week. Um, where we're going to go groom the trails at Robinson Woods. Um, Mr. Casey and Mr. Whitcomb's 8th grade advisories are participating in the Relay for Life, which is a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society. It's where they're going up to Bowdoin on Friday right after school, and from 6 p.m. on Friday night to 12 a.m. on Saturday, they'll have to have a member um, on the track at all times, walking, running, whatever they want. Um, and they've been planning that for a while, so hopefully we'll hear that that went well. And also, next week we're having Spirit Week, 
where we have a theme for each day of the week and kids get to dress up in costumes to match it. And we have grade level winners for each day. And some of the things we're doing this year are color day, clash day, superhero day. Um, we used to have twin day, but to make it more inclusive for everyone, we're having matching outfit day now and pajama day. Any questions? Oh, wait. Um, I forgot to talk about sixth grade. They're in Chiwanki right now, mm -hmm. and they left Monday. They'll be coming back on Friday, and you probably know, but that's an outdoor experience camp where they focus on teamwork and nature. And also, spring sports are going well. That includes baseball, softball, um, girls and guys lacrosse, and track, which is co-ed. Any questions? Any questions or comments? Thank you. Okay, I won't thank you. be here next month, so I want to thank you for your service to the school board all year. It's been a pleasure, and I hope you have a very nice summer. Thank you. Okay. And now we can move on to communications, um, which, which I have a um, statement regarding the school building projects and the town council meeting last night. I would like to state for the record how frustrated and disappointed the school board is with the town council's inability to support the Pine Cove edition. In spite of repeated attempts to provide the town council with sufficient information to make a decision, last night, they chose to send the project to referendum and avoid a vote. In an effort to set the record straight, I would like to respond to Councillor Kayada's assertion that the Council was ready to take a vote on the Pond Cove edition in February, but was unable to because of the actions of the school board. The truth is that in February, the council told the school board they needed to hold a public hearing in March before they could be in position to vote. At that March meeting, after the public hearing, there was no vote. The council only requested further information from the board. As a matter of fact, the council voted seven to zero to table the issue until July. In April, the school board supplied the information that was requested. Subsequently, Jack Roberts contacted me to request that the council bring this issue to a vote in May rather than July, and the school board was willing to comply with their wishes. We were requested to again put in writing the formal recommendation from the board. Last night, that recommendation was indefinitely postponed. Instead, the council chose to send the Pine Cove project to referendum. I also need to address Councillor Kayata's continuous reference to the projected enrollment numbers. She is not painting an accurate picture of the Pine Cove projections. It is fair for her to say that the enrollment numbers project a decline of 100 students between now and 2012. What she is not saying is that this is a system-wide decrease of kindergarten through 12th grade students. In Pine Cove, for example, the most current projections that were done in March of 03 was for 92 students entering kindergarten. We currently have 119 students in kindergarten next year, which means we will have to add an additional class and a part-time teacher. This is a difference of 27 students. How can we say with complete certainty that the numbers for 2012 are correct if the projections based off of a birth rate and in-migration of preschool age children aren't close enough in the upcoming year. With regard to the high school project, Councillor Lynch brought a motion before the council 
to establish a subcommittee for further study of this proposal to better define the project. I would like to remind the public that Councillor Lynch is a member of the Building Advisory Committee who originally brought the project recommendations forward. Councillor Kayata felt she needed more time to evaluate this project. Councillor Carson said she was ready six to eight months ago to make a decision on the high school. And Chairman Roberts said he didn't foresee any changes to the plan that already had been submitted. Clearly, there are mixed messages coming from the council. It is my position as chairperson of the board and after three years of studying this issue with many other community members and school administrators administrators and submitting detailed proposal from three outside companies, SMRT, Planning Decisions, and HKTA Associates. There is really nothing else we can provide to the Council to help them make a decision. The school board is the legal decision-making body for facilities within the school district and has spent enough time in preparation of the details for each of these projects. However, if the scope of this high school project changes by the special subcommittee of the council, with members to be appointed by the chairman of the council, the entire school board will have to approve the new project details. According to the main education statutes, Chapter 609, subsection 15-902, the school board must approve any plan for school construction. In the meantime, the school board needs to move on and prepare for a referendum vote by the community in the fall of this year. Are there any other comments from any other school board members? I'd like to make a comment. Elaine. Um, I'd like to uh, address the same issue this evening um, as a member of the Facilities Committee and the Building Advisory Committee. Um, I am going to have to apologize if I repeat some of the things that Marie has said, but I feel that they do come from a little bit different perspective. Um, but I'd also like to publicly express my disappointment in last evening's Town Council meeting regarding the School Board's recommendation on the Pond Cove edition and the renovation of our high school. While each council member is indeed entitled to their own opinion, I felt that some council members use this public meeting to make statements that I fear the public will take as fact. As most people recognize, statements and opinions can come easily and eloquently, especially if they are not supported by the full context of the facts and the complete picture of the reasoning behind our recommendations. At this time, I feel it's appropriate for me to address some of the concerns I heard last evening that I feel gave the impression that the school board was negligent in their duty to present these projects in a responsible manner. One, the school board did not ask town council to move their vote up to May 12th from their unanimous decision in public meeting to delay the vote to July. A conversation between the two chairs occurred before the letter to which several town councilors referred. We simply confirm the May 12th date in the body of the letter. During their conversation, it was the town council chair that requested moving the date up, and our school board chair simply agreed that that would be fine. Either way, getting town council action uh, does not affect our actions, whether it was in May or in July, and that to imply that we asked for this or to imply a conspiracy uh, to delay is simply wrong. Two, to imply that the town council was ready to vote in February is very difficult for me to believe. If they weren't ready on March 12th because of the missing summary as opposed to our continual reports, how could they have voted in February? The school board acted under information that a May referendum could have occurred if town council voted in February to go to referendum. No mention was made at that time that council would ask for a public hearing prior to their decision. Because we essentially lost two months 
Due to this revised process, we felt we could not adequately inform the public on issues regarding this project and thought that November would be our only alternative. Three, I heard the statement that on March 12th, our board chair used, quote, faulty numbers. I want to be very clear that I do not believe, and this was not true. This statement implied that the sets of numbers that Marie Prager presented were false, even misleading. We presented numbers from a professional firm paid to take another look at our school population growth because past numbers, as Marie has explained, has been consistently, have been consistently underestimated. Despite our meeting with the doubting counselors and the planning decisions firm, the facts remain the same. We will never have enough room at Pond Cove to house four to five classrooms of kindergarten students and to provide the long-term flexibility to house special education needs and Main State Learning uh, Results programming support. If you are even to believe the numbers, this decrease would have minimal impact on the requirement for the actual number of classrooms needed. This is because that decrease in students will be spread out amongst 13 grades and will not result in a change in the numbers of actual classrooms needed. I'd also like to add that at the March 12th meeting, all attending school board members, the superintendent, two planning decision personnel, and the town manager advised the two town councilors that we should err on the high side of our projections due to the inaccuracies over the past two years in projecting the incoming kindergarten classes and the large degree of in-migration that seems to be occurring in Cape Elizabeth compared to other communities. If this was indeed a short-term problem, I too would consider portables a reasonable solution. But after extensive study on the part of two committees in the school board, I do not feel that portables are a solution to this circumstance, which is a long-term problem that started 10 years ago. It is the school board's responsibility to set its own philosophy for education. If our priority is to maintain the integrity of the K-4, 5-8, through and 9-12 school system, it is not up to the town council to decide that we will put our teachers and programs on, quote, diets to pay for the addition, as noted by one council member. When the Pond Cove project goes to referendum, voters and taxpayers will be asked to make their decision based on the knowledge that the average homeowner will pay that additional $30 a year in taxes. Lastly, I think it was a wise decision to take another look at the dollar amount on the high school renovation project. The Building Advisory Committee and the School Board should be commended for already analyzing this project and reducing the initial estimate from $9.4 million to $7.7 million. These figures will age as we go through the referendum process and with construction and renovation costs going up an average of 4% a year, I would support taking a critical look at the numbers and the phasing of the project. I in no way would expect that this committee would question the individual details of the renovation after the recommendation of two committees and the school board. Since it is now apparent that these two projects will come before the town as a referendum, I urge all citizens to take the time to educate themselves on the issues and the reasoning for these recommendations. It is imperative that citizens are aware of and they understand all the facts before they can make their educated decision. The citizens will get this chance over the course of the summer and fall before we go to referendum in November, and it is a responsibility that I as a school member will certainly strive to accomplish. Thank you. Now we can move on to, I'm sorry, Kevin. Okay. I sympathize very, very much with Marie and Elaine and the rest of the members of the board as I am as frustrated as they are in watching this fiasco. I made the choice to stay home last night and watch this on TV rather than be here, and I am absolutely glad that I did. I was appalled by what, I, by what I saw. But enough is enough. The school board and the town council have to work together. Every year for the past six years, I've watched a gradual deterioration in the relationship between the two organizations, which is absolutely not a good formula for running a town. 
prior to the elections, I suggested at several school board meetings and also in conversation with uh, people running for office as members of the council, that following the election, we needed to make plans for a mediation, a joint retreat where we could toss out our issues with each other, get them resolved once and for all, and go back to dealing with the business of the schools in the town. Based on that, I'd like to ask that our superintendent, if the rest of the board is in agreement, contact the town manager and begin to make arrangements so that this might happen towards the end of the summer. Thank you, Kevin. Are there any other um, communications? Okay. Um, then we will move on to um, recognition for some students who are the gold and silver award winners in the national Latin exam. And what is very special about this is that all of these students scored either gold or silver in this exam. And this is our very first year of having Latin in our high school. So, so this is really commendable for them. And as Marie has said, um, this is quite an accomplishment by a group of students in a program that um, we struggled to get into the budget, and, and I guess that that, that struggle was, was well worth it. Um, we had a number of students who scored at a very high level uh, in the national uh, Latin test competition, and even some who scored a, a perfect score. Um, I would first like to recognize, before we bring the students up, since he's, he's here organizing these medals and awards, um, Mort Sol, um, who is the teacher of, of our, our Latin program, and uh, I think has done a, a fabulous job, and would like to first recognize him and award him his certificate for our recognizing our appreciation. Oh, goodness. Thank you, sir. Um, we're going to call, I'm going to call up the students and there is, there are um, some medals. I will read the first certificate and then call up uh, the students receiving the awards. And the first group of students will be recognized as summa cum laude. And the certificate reads, certificate of recognition presented to Theodore Tereski. This certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of your outstanding academic achievement on the national Latin exam. Theodore Tereski. <laughs> Next presentation is to another gold award winner, Leslie Harrison. Leslie was one of the students who had a perfect score. <laughs> Skylar Armstrong, gold award winner. Elizabeth Kayada also was a student who scored a perfect score. Meryl Poulin, Silver Award winner, Maxima. Katie Tamaro, Silver Award winner. Yeah. 
Jacob Metzger, Silver Award winner. Kelly Steinman, Silver Award winner. Mark Barrett, Silver Award winner. Yanni Perry, Silver Award winner. Ben McKinney, Silver Award winner. Kristen Howe, Silver Award winner. Heidi Millar, Silver Award winner. <laughs> Sam Labasco, Silver Award winner. <laughs> Jared Jones, Silver Award winner. Jennifer Croteau, Silver Award winner. Reed Hansen, Silver Award winner. Amanda Luck, Silver Award winner. Some of those students that aren't here are probably home studying for the next one. Uh, Garrett Currier, Silver Award winner. Nicole Lyons, Silver Award winner. Kaylee Skopinski, uh, Gold Award winner, and also was a perfect score. <laughs> Elizabeth Allen, Gold Award winner. Kenji Tiberi, Gold Award winner. And Haley Elliott, Gold Award winner. Tales o tempora, o mores. <laughs> now, uh, the mission of the Cape Elizabeth schools is, I read it today, is to develop one of the top school systems in the nation. And one thing I'd like to add is that the national Latin exam at Cape Elizabeth was given to every student. Not every school does this, I know a number of schools would take its top 50% of its students and then give the exam just to inflate the grades. But of the uh, students who took the exam, uh, only four were below the, the national average. And everyone else was, I don't know, 
30, 34 or so were above, above the national average. It was a real honor and privilege for me to have these students and to be part of the uh, Cape Elizabeth school system. It was, uh, it was always an exciting time. Good students make teachers look awful good, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's what happened. Uh, I simply gave them tough tests and held them accountable, and these students did the rest. So congratulations. for a couple of minutes until the students Okay, and now we will move on to um, the consideration of a recommendation to the athletic fee position um, for the basketball coach. The purpose of this statement is to explain the process leading to the renewal of Jim Ray's contract as varsity basketball coach and to clarify the school board's role in this process. As a school board, we are constrained from publicly discussing most personnel matters. Given that constraint, I will try to be as open as possible without disclosing information that is confidential or that has not already been made public by others. In March of 2003, at the end of the basketball season, the high school principal presented a very thorough and detailed evaluation to Coach Ray. Based upon the identification of strengths and weaknesses, the evaluation concluded with an improvement plan. Mr. Ray did not agree with the evaluation and refused to accept certain aspects of the, of the improvement plan. Because Mr. Ray did not accept the improvement plan, Mr. Shedd felt he could not recommend to the superintendent that Mr. Ray's contract be renewed. It is important to note that Principal Shedd arrived at his recommendation independently based on direct observations of practices and games and conversations with current and former players and on input from parents with a wide variety of viewpoints. Superintendent Frisella supported Mr. Shedd's recommendation not to renew Coach Ray's contract. However, in a departure from the usual practice, the superintendent offered to Mr. Ray the option to appeal to the school board. The superintendent also recused himself from any further involvement in this matter to avoid the appearance of a conflict of interest. Mr. Ray then chose to retain an attorney to represent him in an appeal to the school board. However, before that appeal occurred, the principal and Mr. Ray agreed to have further discussions about the improvement plan. After several lengthy discussions that included the principal, Mr. Ray, and the athletic director, Keith Weatherby, Mr. Ray agreed to follow an improvement plan established by the principal. As a result, Mr. Shedd recommended that Mr. Ray's contract be renewed. The media coverage has, su has suggested that some type of deal was brokered to resolve this matter by the attorneys involved. 
Although our attorney has been in communication with Mr. Ray's attorneys, the lawyers did not negotiate anything with regard to the contents of the evaluation and not the improvement plan. The principal wrote the improvement plan. Mr. Shedd did accommodate two valid concerns expressed by Mr. Ray regarding points in which the principal felt were secondary. However, the original evaluation and action plan presented to Mr. Ray in March of 2003 has not been compromised. The school board's first opportunity to hear Mr. Shedd's recommendation and to review the facts in this matter was held in an executive session on May 6, 2003 with the principal, the athletic director, and Mr. Ray. Our concern as a school board was twofold. Number one, that the evaluation, the improvement plan, and the administrative recommendation be consistent with the philosophy and beliefs of the school board athletic policy. And number two, that the administration's recommendation be guided solely by the best interests of the student athletes and the school community and not by any political pressures. After reviewing the evaluation and improvement plan and discussing these matters with Mr. Shedd and Mr. Ray, we are satisfied that the recommendation meets these criteria. And now um, I would ask for uh, a motion to be made in support of the principal's recommendation. George? I'd move that the board um, accept the recommendation of the principal uh, in terms of this uh, assignment to uh, athletic B position for the winter 2003, 2004, specifically for boys basketball. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. Kathy? Uh, comments or questions from the board? I have a comment. Lane? I'd like to go on, on record of supporting Principal Jeff Shedd's recommendation to rehire Jim Ray as boys varsity basketball coach for the 0304 winter season. My goal as a school board member throughout this whole process was to remain impartial and as open-minded as possible until the school board could hear the facts and details regarding the evaluation and recommendation. The numerous phone calls and emails, both pro and con, certainly drove this process to the point of review, but it was the content and not the numbers of such correspondence that caused me the most concern. Regardless of how I felt about the content of the evaluation and the public statements, I needed to be able to know that our policy was not compromised and that the process and evaluation was consistent, fair, and effectively communicated. I am secure in knowing that all Cape Elizabeth coaches have been evaluated in a manner as approved by the new policy. I am also comfortable with the answers to many of the questions the community has raised regarding this issue, ranging from the qualifications of the evaluator to the neutrality of the decision makers. That being said, I feel that there is the possibility that not all of our coaches were aware of the change in athletic policy and the potential consequences put into place last spring. Although the new coach's handbook clearly states these expectations, I am not convinced that preseason conferences with all coaches were accomplished, allowing review of these new policies and the required goal setting. It is because of this that I am willing to support Jeff Shedd's recommendation and most importantly, the goals for this coaching positions uh, next year. I will continue to stand in support of our new athletic policy, especially its philosophy and beliefs. I look forward to improvement in our athletic department in regards to the hiring, evaluation, and training of our coaches. At the same time, I recognize the opportunity for the school board to improve in developing a more comprehensive policy in areas of, uh, such as conflict of interest and our appeals process guidelines. I want to thank Tom Fasella for recusing himself when speculation arose regarding impartiality. 
I am very comfortable that the process was not compromised by a conflict of interest. I would like to thank Jeff Shedd for agreeing to take on the evaluation process with the agreement of both Keith Weatherby and Jim Ray back in December. And finally, I would like to thank all the parties for agreeing to take another look at their recommendation and their willingness to accept the action plan for what I hope will be the betterment of the basketball program for all our athletes. Thank you. Other comments, Susan? <clears throat> I have decided to vote not to support the recommendation to rehire Jim Ray as basketball coach. I want to begin by saying that my vote is in no way a reflection of the job that Jeff Shedd has done in his work on this recommendation. From my perspective, Jeff has contributed a tremendous amount of time and energy to this process. Without his expertise, his experience, and his integrity, we might never have gotten to this point. To him, I am personally grateful. However, in my opinion, the issue at the heart of not recommending to rehire Coach Ray is not about a few parents trying to exert their influence over, co over who coaches their kids or parents wanting their kids coddled. It is not about coaching styles or coaching philosophies. And it surely, in my opinion, is not about a conflict of interest. In my view, what is at the heart of this issue is organizational change. Four years ago, the school board of Cape Elizabeth hired a new superintendent to lead our organization. As a community, we asked for his knowledge and his ex expertise to help us define the kind of school system we want for our kids and to guide us in attaining that vision. During the past few years, this work has produced a number of changes. One deliverable of that work was our athletic policy of philosophy and beliefs. Among those beliefs, we stated the following. We believe in an equitable athletic program and one in which all members of a team feel welcomed and valued. We believe that school athletics should take place in a physically and emotionally safe environment where a climate of enthusiasm, high expectation, and mutual respect is fostered. At all levels of competition, athletics should remain fun. We believe that the player-coach relationship is at the heart of a successful athletic program. We believe that athletics is a natural extension of the classroom. It is my understanding that each coach was given a handbook with these philosophies, values, and guidelines in a meeting prior to the start of each athletic season during the past year. In addition to our changes to athletic policies, as a community, we developed the Code of Ethical and Responsible Behavior. Last fall, the high school family handbook stated, we hold the following core values as standards for behavior. Respect, honesty, compassion, fairness, responsibility, courage, and humility. This organization captured in writing for all who are willing to read it, who we are, what we value, and what we stand for. When an organization goes through change, people within it wait to see, are we just saying it again, or this time do we mean it? I think that what has surprised people is that this time we mean it. Here is what we expect, here is what we will no longer be tolerated, here is what will no longer be tolerated, and it has to be about the kids. I've worked in many jobs and for many employees. In my experience, a formal reprimand in any job needed to be taken seriously. A meeting would follow the reprimand, at which time behaviors that needed to change would be clearly identified and a plan to get there implemented. It was ultimately the employee's responsibility to make those changes. Based on what I have heard and seen, I believe that fair and valid performance feedback was given. I believe that issues were identified. I believe that a fair process was proposed and agreed upon. I believe that the opportunity for change was offered and not taken. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Jennifer? Um, I have very limited personal knowledge of Jim Ray. 
Although I have heard the diverse opinions of Jim's coaching abilities from many townspeople, my decision must be limited to information presented to me as a member of the board during executive session to discuss, discuss Jeff Shedd's evaluation and recommendation to rehire Jim Ray as basketball coach. My decision tonight is based on my belief that the school board's job is to set the direction and vision for our school, to enact policies to ensure compliance and movement toward that direction and vision, and to empower our administrators to implement those policies. I feel compelled to rely on their judgment and to defer to their decisions whenever possible, if substantiated and justified. As coaches are hired on a year-to-year -year basis, they are not afforded tenure, seniority, or due process rights. They are essentially employees at will. No reasons are legally necessary to not rehire a coach for a subsequent year. However, because of our respect for individuals and our desire to move this organization forward toward achieving our mission and vision, the new athletic policies drafted by a committee of which Mr. Ray was a member and adopted just a year ago re require the evaluations of these employees. Evaluations, however, are much more useful if they include a plan for improvement agreed upon by both the evaluator and the employee. Jeff Shedd's evaluation of Jim Ray has not changed. Only his recommendation, based on an action plan for impro improvement, ultimately agreed upon by Jim Ray, has changed. I believe it is the consensus of supporters and detractors alike that Jim has the potential to be a great coach. To this end, I wish him well and hope that he achieves that and will vote to rehire him. In closing, I would like to take this opportunity to voice my faith in and full support for all our administrators involved in this matter, more specifically, Jeff Shedd and Tom Frisella. I would also like to take this opportunity to ask members of this community to take the time to reflect upon their personal behaviors in this matter of public interest. I have been disappointed by the willingness of some to attribute ill motives and to repeat and perpetuate both untruths and information of which they have no personal knowledge, with apparent disregard for the effect of those statements on the individuals to whom they pertain. I personally would like to set a better example for the youth of this town. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Any, Kevin? <coughs> When I ran for school board six years ago, I wrote myself a note, and the note said, it's about the kids, stupid. It's not about you, meaning me. <clears throat> Several years ago, I still had that note in my wallet when I ran again. We then had a situation where I had to compromise a long-held basic tenant in my life that you are innocent until proven guilty. And the reason for doing that was because of my overriding concern for the safety of the students. I still hold that note. I don't have to carry it around anymore. Now that I've been reelected for the third time, I don't need to keep reminding myself that it's about the kids. It becomes second nature to me. My vote will speak for itself. I will vote no. But I do want Principal Shedd and Dr. Forsella to know that I appreciate their efforts in this matter. I particularly appreciate Dr. Uh, Principal Shedd's taking on this rather unpleasant task, and I do not challenge what he has brought forward to us. But what I do look at is there has been no change in the evaluation other than the wording of, I cannot recommend you at this time versus, I can recommend you. So what's changed? The only person who can answer that question is Mr. Ray. We can't answer it because we're not allowed to divulge that information. That information is available. All you have to do is get the right people to release that information. In the meantime, there have been uh, a number of references to the coach's handbook, 
I have multiple copies of the coach's handbook here. It's a public document. If anyone from the media wants it, it's here. It makes interesting reading. That's all I have to say on the matter. Thank you, Kevin. Um, are there any other comments, just, George? Just very briefly. Um, I, like the others, have had a chance to evaluate the procedures followed here. Um, I've had an um, ample opportunity to discuss the matter with everyone involved. Um, I certainly have had my opportunity, as have the others, to provide my input to the coach very directly, which I did um, verbally, and then in a confidential letter that was issued from the school board directly to the coach. Um, I believe that uh, there has been an opportunity for, fear, for, for a fair and thorough evaluation of all of the facts in this particular case. Um, I endorse and I support um, Jeff Shedd's recommendation. I fully subscribe to the details that Marie read in the board statement, um, and I certainly um, uh, support 100 percent and have full confidence um, in both our principal, Mr. Shedd, and our superintendent, Dr. Forsella, as I suspect um, the rest of my colleagues on this board do as well. Um, I therefore will vote to accept um, Mr. Shedd's recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Something. <laughs> Kathy? Um, I want to say that everything's been said that needs to be said here, I'm sure. This has been a very trying time for all of us. I hope as a community that we can really be reflective of what we've done here and where we've taken our school system and that we can look more to the future, reflect on what we've done, think about the comments, think about the remarks, think about some of the behaviors, and remember what our real mission is, to move our children and our system towards a higher goal. And I want to hope that we're on that road today. Thank you to Tom and particularly to Jeff for the work and the time that's been dedicated to this issue. Many people have said to me, if we could get as excited about academics as an athletic issue, just imagine where the energy might take us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now, if we can um, vote on the recommendation from the principal. All those in favor? Five. Those opposed? Two. Thank you. Okay. Next, we will move on to the superintendent's report. Tom? I have a, a few items that I would like to share. First, as many of you are aware, um, over the last few days, we have one more. I'll take a break. Um, we uh, conducted uh, what we are calling walkthroughs in all three of our buildings. Um, this process was something that, that we learned about from one of the consortium members that we've been working with. Um, as you know, that we are in a consortium of uh, high achieving schools from throughout the United States, uh, one being Clayton, Missouri, and another one in Palisade School District outside of Philadelphia. Um, and the purpose of, of these walkthroughs was to collect data from students and staff and be to better inform our teaching practice and our future direction planning initiative. Um, and our goals were to gather baseline data regarding staff and student perceptions about the building level goals, uh, initiatives, and beliefs. Also to gather baseline data regarding student and staff perceptions about progress toward the fulfillment of our school district's mission, beliefs, and strategic goals to create a feeling among staff and students that their input is important and valued by the school district. Also to collect and organize data so that, so that it will assist us as we, as we revisit our future direction plan in late August. This will also, one of the goals was to have this information serve as a source at the district and building level as we develop plans for 2003 and 4 and beyond. 
um, we were able to, in those three days, conduct 548 student interviews. We interviewed 53 staff members, and we had a total of 48 individuals assist us completing the interviews over the three-day period. Just to give you a flavor of the kind of information we're getting out of this, um, some of the student questions had to do with them, students talking to us about how they felt they learned best in their classes, whether or not they felt their teachers used a variety of teaching techniques, um, whether they felt challenged in their classes. And in each of these, we, we try to get the students to elaborate as much as possible. If they felt supported in their work academically, and if they did, how did they feel supported? And if they didn't, why not and why? What did that look like? If they felt safe at the school, physically, emotionally, and academically, and, what, and specifically, what type of behaviors or student behaviors had the greatest impact on their feelings of safety. Also, at all the schools, we asked questions about um, the environment and whether they felt that a school had a respectful environment, student to student, student to teacher, and teacher to student, and that they felt the community of Cape Elizabeth values and places a high priority on the youth of the town. We also asked questions about the strengths and weaknesses of the particular school. At each level, obviously, the questions were worded a bit differently so that uh, the question at Pond Cove would be read more like, what do you like about Pond Cove? And how do you learn best seeing, hearing, or touching? So learning styles wasn't necessarily a question that was asked at the elementary school. Um, we had some great responses from students, and the interviewers um, took voluminous notes um, and we will have a team this summer that will spend two days, we're hoping, to uh, get through all of the data and have a report ready for our August uh, meeting with the entire staff. Um, also, as part of this process, we really wanted to get feedback from staff. As you know, with our future direction plan, we have several strategic goals. Um, and this data and these conversations with staff and students would kind of give us um, some good information about if we're, whether or not we're moving in the right direction um, in the accomplishment of our strategic goals and our plan. Just to read a couple of the questions that staff were asked, um, one was, to what degree do you feel that you have time for collaboration, reflection, and professional development on a regular basis? As you know, professional development and that time for collaboration is a huge piece of our future direction plan. Also, how staff characterize the status or the progress our district is making toward both a coordinated K-12 curriculum and a local comprehensive assessment system. To what degree do you feel that the staff in your building meets the needs of all learners by focusing on student learning styles or employing a variety of teaching techniques? Um, several other questions having to do with, with staff development, um, but also the same kinds of questions we were asking the students in terms of the environment um, as we asked staff members to respond to um, the respectful environment that we hope to create student to student, student to staff, and, and staff to student. Um, this will be, I think, a tremendous amount of information that we will have available to us. Um, it's, we rarely ask students for their, for their feedback. Um, I think the students were very appreciative of, of us taking the time to actually talk to them and ask them their feelings about their learning and, and their, their feelings about their school. Um, we did have uh, teams of teachers and administrators from other school districts that helped us. Um, and I would like to thank uh, members of the Yarmouth uh, School Department, uh, Falmouth, and Wells. They all sent teams, and um, a couple of them asked us if we would return the favor because they, they really thought it was a, it's a great process. But it was nice to get that outside input um, as we debrief the whole situation with, with those uh, members of the, the, the interview team from other communities. Um, that is just one piece of the data um, that we will be using, and that kind of goes into our future direction plan. The next item, <coughs> because in August, as I said, we will be meeting as an entire teaching staff, representatives from the support staff, uh, community leaders, students, parents, anywhere from 250 to 300 individuals uh, will be gathering uh, for a full day workshop where we will review our plan, we'll take another look at our mission and our vision, uh, look at our strategic goals, 
we will have uh, information available to staff and just what has been accomplished over the last three years. And I think we'll all be very pleased to see as I check off all, all of the issues and all of the goals and all of the individual action plans that we've been doing a lot of work over the last three years and I think we'll be very proud of, of, of what we've been able to accomplish. There are also things that we just didn't get to. Um, our future direction plan was created in a different economy. When that first session was held almost four years ago, um, we, we had a dream and we really had a vision where we wanted to put ourselves at a very high level. Um, obviously, there are costs associated with that. I think we've done a nice job with the limited funds in moving us forward, but August will give us an opportunity to review that, uh, maybe be a bit more realistic in what we can accomplish, but continue to move forward. Any questions on future direction planning? Um, Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. Pleased to say that the foundation has awarded another $15,000 in grants. Um, the group also held a full day retreat um, a couple Sundays ago, um, where they re re uh, took another look at their own mission and vision and are now involved in a strategic planning process, which um, kind of mirrors ours in the process that we went through as a school district. Um, Elaine was, has been involved with that group uh, from the inception as I have been, but it's really nice to see the growth that, that's going on. I think there are over 20 uh, members of the board of directors and a number of people who are on several committees. They still have as their goal to raise uh, one to two million dollars to serve as an endowment for the school system. They will be off and running with a capital campaign in the fall. They have hired a consultant to work with them on that. Um, and I think they're really going to make an awful lot of progress next year, and you'll be hearing more about that. Also in my uh, report, you'll notice there is a letter of resignation from Marilyn Dale. And lastly, a change of status. Um, longtime teacher, administrator, school leader, uh, Michael Efren, um, will be moving from full-time status to 0.6 status uh, next year. That's my report. Thank you, Tom. Now we will move on to the principal's reports, and we'll start with Nancy at the middle school. Good evening. It's a little overwhelming to be up here tonight, only because I see my colleague Keith Weatherby back here, and I know he has a stopwatch on us. Um, and he hasn't been at all of our meetings this year, but the pressure, Keith, of having you out there with that watch, I don't know. Um, we'll give it a try. Um, first of all, last Tom mentioned the walkthroughs and just wanted to share with you a few comments from the people in our building. Last Monday was our walkthrough day, and several staff members especially stopped after the day and said, what a great day. This was such a great feeling in this building today because what the walkthrough brought us is you saw people all over, some people they knew, some people they didn't know. You saw um, students, the adults were in a room when they were interviewed, but the students were out in the hallway talking seriously and intently, asking questions, and they said it was terrific to just sort of look out, see all of that going on, knowing other kinds of learning was going on in the classroom, but out there people were talking about what we do, why we do what we do, what we think we're doing and all of those kinds of things it was a great day and people felt it was a wonderful opportunity and I know they're looking forward to the data that we receive and the information from that walkthrough so it was a nice feeling within our building on the day of our walkthrough and I think the others may share similar reflections with you as well for any anxious sixth grade parents out there it is Chewonky week which means it's always the week you don't have to worry about watering your lawn <laughs> the weather will cooperate and um, we have heard, I checked in with Chiwanki yesterday afternoon. I talked to the assistant director, a young lady named Katie. And she said everyone was doing well. In fact, when I talked to her about 1.30, everyone had just left the central encampment area and was marching off, as she described it, to set up their tents and camps and get their camps um, set up. She said with lots of energy and lots of smiles, even though there had been some drizzle there throughout the day. Um, this morning at about 10 o'clock, we received a phone call from Gary Record, um, who calls in 
each day while you're there. And he had just been up to the central camp, checked in with everybody. Um, everyone was having a great time. They hadn't had any downpours at Chiwanki. They had once again had some drizzle, but there were smiles on people's faces. They were excited. In fact, one group wanted him to pass on to me that in fact they were having a blast. So um, I think that Chwanki will once again um, prove to be a valuable learning experience for our students. I know we have some anxious parents out there, and I would encourage them to feel free to give me a call, and I can give them updates or reassure them um, as they would like to. Um, I think their sons and daughters are enjoying themselves at this point. In cel I know next month is usually the month we celebrate some things, but just wanted to make you aware that we have been contacted by the head of the Milty project, our laptop project, and they would like to come to Cape Elizabeth um, on June 4th. They, as part of the Gates Foundation grant, they work with the George Lucas Foundation, um, George Lucas being a famous filmmaker. I don't believe he is coming himself, but the George Lucas Foundation is coming to film at our school on June 4th um, because uh, we have come through as one of the schools where students are excited and doing lots of things on their laptops. That was to be Laptop Collection Day, but Gary Lunoy and Bev Bisbee, it took them about that long to decide they'd collect the laptops on June 5th. And uh, all of the teachers have agreed that um, when they come through, they will um, do some filming in all the classrooms with students using their laptops. Further, uh, we have been contacted um, by that foundation that they also want to highlight our I-team. And once again, you've heard us say this several times, but. It's important, I think, to celebrate the simple ideas as well. And the I-Team was a simple but perfect idea of Gary Lenoy that he brought to us. And it's one of those that's so easy to go along with. Um, but he had that idea. He shared that with us. And we have shared it throughout many state meetings. And um, it's just something that has worked well for us and something we have been able to share and something that has really caught the eye of a lot of people outside of the state of what a great idea. And it certainly has turned out to be a profitable idea for us. So the students will be kind of excited about that. I don't think we'll be in a feature-length film, but we will put, they're doing a report for the Milty Project. I like that word. You said profitable for us. So are we making money on this? Uh, no money. We're just <laughs> getting some more free press time. Oh, okay. Positive, constructive, sure. kid kind of focused <laughs> press. So um, okay. anything, that's, that's all. <laughs> I, I don't think they'll be paying no, us, no, no. Well. no, nothing like that. Um, also, just for people that at least and at least mentioned our concert tomorrow night, which will be fantastic, hope some of you can come. We also had a concert last Wednesday night where we featured our fifth and sixth grade performers, and that was great. They had terrific fun, and they did a great job. And um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night's performance as well. They did mention the last dance, um, probably in their excitement because they're eighth graders. They forgot to mention that's also the day of the last social uh, for the fifth and sixth graders. And also to remind people who are the parents of seventh and eighth graders that the last dance just simply means it's the last one of this year. You do not have to have a date. You do not have to have a ride in the limousine. You do not have to have a special outfit. You do not have to have a dinner party before. Those are all options if someone so wishes. But at our dance, you will see people who are very dressed very, very elegantly, all the way to the kids who show up in their t-shirts and shorts, and um, just to have a good time. So it's last, because it's the last one of the year. Nothing else special about that. Let's see, um, just to make people aware, um, because I know some families plan vacations early, we have received information, as have all the schools, of changes in the MEA. Um, they are going to be given a two-week period next year, the first two weeks in March, and that is a change from one week in late November, early December, and then the week, the first week in March. So it will be the first two weeks in March for anyone listening out there making early plans. And then finally, I would be remiss tonight if I didn't pass on from the middle school our sincere thanks to Susan Steinman for being a board member for the last three years. We have a special affinity for Susan because um, first started working with our school seven years ago, and we so well trained her in the middle school that whenever she sees any organization connected with education that has MS in it, she assumes it means middle school. And we'd like to say, Susan, we support that perception, and we think that's perfect. So um, keep up those good thoughts. But want to thank you for your dedication to all of our students and all of our programs, to all of us, for pushing us to be better than we thought we could be and supporting us along the way. So thank you for your dedication to us. We'll miss you, but 
we still have your phone number. Uh, we know what your profession is, and we know you can still be a help to us in the middle school. So thank you very much. Nancy, I have a question. Sure. Last night um, on the news, they were talking about the 7th and 8th grade laptop program in the state. Mm -hmm. And they had mentioned something about a pilot program um, that would be in certain schools in the state that would continue on through high school. Do you, are you aware of that? I'm not aware of that, and although they've contacted us to be on these films for free, they haven't contacted us about being one of those pilot schools. Um, but if we find out anything about it, we'll let you know. We do have a meeting with um, all of the organizers, the Bev Bisbee, Gary Lenoy, and I will go to a meeting on June 2nd. They may mention something at that time, um, but I haven't seen anything in the numerous emails we get from them yet, so I'm not sure what that is. They may have those schools already selected. Um, but I haven't seen anything. I don't think any of us have seen anything where we could have applied to be one of those schools. But if there's a chance, we'll do it. Okay, thank you. Um, Pine Cove, Tom. Uh, good evening. I just wanted to start by uh, publicly thanking the Pine Cove Parents Association for the amazing teacher appreciation luncheon they put on last week. They do it every year and somehow it seems to get better every year. And that's just one example of the quiet but efficient way the PCPA works behind the scenes to support the teachers and students at Pond Cove and I really appreciate it. So does everyone else. Incidentally, the PCPA is, is sponsoring the third in a series of book discussions uh, aimed at parents to come talk about issues that kids and families deal with as their um, kids grow up. We, uh, at our last meeting, managed to get 30 people, which you know, it can't be me. We've got 30 people, so we're going to try our luck against Little League and have a meeting on June 3rd, with, uh, and the book will be the biggest job we uh, will ever have, the book written by the people who work up at the high school in Bath. And uh, as Nancy said, if anybody out there is listening, we're not giving quizzes on the book. If you haven't read it, you're still welcome to come and listen and contribute your thoughts. Another climate-related uh, activity, Tom and Nancy have already talked about the walkthrough, and we, uh, at the end of each of the three sessions, Tom gave a brief overview to each of the schools about uh, just a brief summary of what was going on. Um, and the response at Ponco was very, very positive about the teacher-student relationships particularly. And I have to admit, hearing that, it's something I almost take for granted because it's so strong at Ponco. And that reminds me to publicly thank the teachers, too, for all their hard work and dedication that makes that such a strong bond. So between the uh, parental involvement and the teacher dedication, we have what we call social capital. No money, Jen. Just have it. And, we, and Tom also mentioned that in the student interviews, the word focused came up a lot. So I expect that we are building up a lot of academic capital at the same time. So uh, once again, praise to the students and parents of Cape Elizabeth. Just to catch you up on the looping survey, I think I mentioned that we, uh, we were planning to do one around uh, parent conference time, and by handing those out, we got about a 50, over 50% 50 50 response from the families, and 80% of those support looping in general, and here's the bigger question, specifically support it for their children. We think that will get us over the hump with the little um, placement glitch, the glitch that we encountered the past couple of years, which means that this time next year we might be uh, reinstituting looping. Uh, team leaders have taken a look at the data. We've discussed how this may or, might, uh, may or may not happen, and they'll bring those thoughts back to the faculty. Uh, finally, I just wanted to let you know that, no, we're not going to star in the matrix. No, we, that would never happen at Bunco, but. Uh, uh, Shari Robinson and I went to Chicago to the annual meeting of the American Educational Research Association. Sounds boring, doesn't it? We went, actually went during vacation and, and loved it. We, uh, we were semi-invited because we've been involved with lesson study groups, researchers, and implementation sites around the country. So uh, responding to email, we decided to, uh, to, go, to go, go to all the lesson study sessions, and we were treated as equals, which is kind of nice. Uh, even though we, um, wore, we spotted name tags that said Pond Cove School, Cape Elizabeth, we were uh, sitting next to the leading experts in the field, not just of lesson study, but in staff development, professional development, a lot of other things. It was a great time for both of us. Uh, we learned a lot. I reported briefly back to the district leadership team, and I have some ideas about uh, 
how to apply that knowledge back at Pond Cove. Oh, one other thing Nancy didn't mention about the MEA, speaking of the MEA, it's been shortened. It's going to be English, language, arts, and math, and science and technology. The other parts of the MEA have been dropped. <laughs> so next year when we report back to you, yes, I see you. I see those looks on your faces. We'll explain more later. <laughs> Any questions? No. Thank you. High school, Jeff. Uh, just a few bullet points. Uh, first of all, the, as Aaron mentioned, the Senior Transition Project did begin today. Um, we have a lot of students doing some really interesting projects all around the community, um, and the students were very excited about that. Um, we're kind of excited about that too. And the prom is on Friday, as he mentioned. It's at the, at the uh, Old Mariners Church in Portland. Um, we have um, a couple of things going on related to learning results um, in an effort to, as we further identify the support systems that we need to put into place uh, to support students, uh, particularly incoming ninth graders who we um, anticipate may have a difficulty with some learning results. Um, there will be letters going out to parents um, later this week, actually. Um, our math teachers have worked very closely with math teachers in the middle school. Um, they've looked at test data. They've uh, had great, great cooperation with the eighth grade math teachers who have administered an assessment to try to identify um, students who may be expected to have some particular weaknesses. So we're going to be sending out some letters to some parents this week um, saying that we have some concerns. Uh, based on the information, um, no, no alarms that we want to send out, but uh, we are going to offer up to parents and strongly recommend to parents to take up the opportunity uh, for their students to have some additional time with, this, with math with us this year uh, based on the uh, approach that Charlotte Hanna, our math teacher, has taken with the, um, with the accelerated math program that she's using this year to really be very focused and very individualized to try to address some specific skills deficits that we see will be obstacles uh, for kids meeting the learning results, uh, which is one of the purposes of the MEA changes and all those other things that are going on. The other thing that we're close to close to putting finishing touches on, although it's not a done deal yet, uh, is we've had a significant amount of feedback over the last couple of years since I've been there anyway, uh, from parents and lately from some students as well about the need to have a more systematic approach to introducing kids to some study skills uh, that are important to success at the high school. Um, so, in fact, Belinda Snell, one of our guidance counselors, did a survey uh, of a vast majority of our, uh, this year's freshmen, and across the board, students from all different cross-sections of, of <coughs> academically, socially, and everything else, one of the, one of the things that they, that they identified as concerns, by a significant percentage, not an overwhelming, but a very significant percentage, was the need to have some stronger study skills. Uh, so we intend to introduce those to ninth graders in a systematic way, and then uh, to have those skills that are taught reinforced in the ninth grade classrooms next year by their classroom teachers, which is critical so that the skills are not simply taught in isolation. Um, again, the finishing touches are being put on that. It's not, it's not completely finalized, but uh, I think we have some good ideas and we'll be talking about that more specifically. Um, related to, indirectly related to learning standards, um, I attended, a, um, uh, along with Angel Schiapani and Sharon Merrill from the school, um, a, we hosted a seminar sponsored by NIESC, which is our accreditation agency, um, and in calendar year 2005, uh, we will be hosting a visiting team coming to Cape Elizabeth High School to take a look at how we're doing as a high school, um, for them to tell us what we're doing well and what we can do better uh, based on information that we give to them. NIESC has in the last several years, because of the whole wave of, of standards-based approaches to education, has completely revamped its learning sta its, its standards for, for accreditation. Um, so it's very interesting to see the parallels that are happening there and in other places um, and some of the things that we're looking at. Um, I wanted to second Nancy's uh, thanks to Sue Steinman. Um, I've been a teacher, uh, I've been a lawyer, um, and I can say that Susan shares one trait uh, that all excellent teachers and lawyers share, which is that every committee has ever been, I've ever been on, school board meetings, evaluation committee meetings, and other meetings, 
She has that one trait which distinguishes excellent teachers and excellent lawyers, and that is she asks great probing questions. Uh, and that's just a, a great thing, and we've learned a lot from the questions that you asked us, Susan, and thank you very much. I will put in a last pitch for the Spelunkers High School staff team at <laughs> the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation Spelling Bee in two days. Um, we're not in favor of betting, but if you do anything informally, Spelunkers, I think, have, have, have some real talent. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Now we can move on to the committee reports. Um, the finance subcommittee, Elaine. Uh, yeah, the finance committee met prior to this evening's uh, regular meeting. Uh, where we reviewed the appropriations and signed warrants. There was also a discussion, a discussion regarding a new development um, that has come to our attention that we may need to add an additional part-time kindergarten teacher to next year's roles. Uh, the original projection um, of 92 students uh, for incoming kindergartners uh, is currently at 119. Um, this new position would be um, uh, at the cost of $23,750. And it was the feeling uh, of the board that we would wait until September um, and then we would possibly need to go to town council to ask for supplemental funds. Um, there were concerns expressed that with our minimal $70,000 contingency fund, we would not be comfortable deciding to use nearly one-third of that amount so early on in the year. Um, and that was it. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Um, and now we move to the policy subcommittee. Susan? Um, yes, we um, met uh, last Wednesday and have um, brought forward uh, a great number of policies for second reading and quite a number as well for first reading. Um, and the next meeting, I'm sorry? Thursday. Oh, we met on Thursday. I apologize. Thursday. And um, we will be meeting one more time this year, June 4th, Wednesday, to um, kind of review what the plan was for the year, where we are against plan, and set goals for um, people who will be moving forward with the work next year. I thought the stack of policies was the whole policy book. <laughs> it feels like this. Um, now we'll move on to unfinished business. And again, Susan, um, consideration of policies for second reading. Um, okay, you have in your packets um, each of, copies of each of these policies. And from a process standpoint, I think what I'd like to do is just read through the titles and um, if anyone has comments, fine, otherwise we'll, we'll move along. Is that fair? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, first policy for second reading, school system commitment to standards for ethical and responsible behavior. System-wide student code of conduct. Student discipline. Suspension of students. Expulsion of students. Weapons violence and school safety. Bomb threats. Hazing, <coughs> harassment and sexual harassment of students, student discrimination and harassment complaint procedure, school board policy, allegation of harassment, physical and or sexual abuse. Um, I'm sorry, that's a copy of the old policy. That's not for second reading. 
I apologize. Um, drug and alcohol use by students. Tobacco use and possession. Tobacco use and possession administrative procedure. Student conduct on buses. Student conduct, um, I'm sorry, student locker storage facilities. Um, and that concludes the package of code of conduct policies for second reading. Should I? Um, what did we miss? Class size. Um, the, I didn't consider those code of conduct. Oh, I'm sorry. Should, should we okay. vote separately on code of conduct, or? I, I, just okay. so that people are aware, um, the, the policies that, that Susan just went through are all part of um, the required student code of conduct as part of the, the Main State Learning Results legislation that all schools in Maine are required um, to put together. It all started, um, I think, about a, a year, year and a half ago. I know George facilitated this, a community session that we had in looking at um, our values as a community, and which led into discussions about what kinds of behaviors we expected, and all the related policies that Susan just went through um, come from that requirement for a district-wide student code of conduct. So should we vote on those policies as a block? Yeah. Okay. Um, I move that we accept the policies that we've just read for second reading um, and approve that we adopt them tonight as, as part of our code of conduct policy package. Second. Second, Kathy. All, all those in favor? Seven, zero. Okay. In addition, we have two more policies for um, second reading. Um, the first one is class size. Should we vote on that separately? No. It's just graduation requirements. Too. And gra class size and graduation requirements are the two policies. I think you can do it together. together. Okay. All right. Um, I move that we adopt the two policies we've just named, class size and graduation requirements, after second reading. Second, Jennifer. All those in favor? Seven, zero. Okay. Susan, did you mention non-discrimination, equal opportunity, and affirmative action? Um, I have it. Did it, did it not get listed? I, I don't. Okay. I didn't, I didn't I hear think, it. I didn't hear it either. All right. So, on the off chance. Okay, it, just in case. I move that we also adopt um, the policy for non-discrimination, non-discriminating, non-discriminating equal opportunity and affirmative action. Okay, second. And that's part of the code of conduct too, right? Or no? No. Right. It's, it is one of the code of conduct yeah. policies. Yeah. Right. That's what I thought. Policy. Okay. Right. Second. George. All those in favor? Seven, zero. Okay. And then we'll move on to new business. Um, the first is the superintendent's recommendations for spring athletic fees. Uh, I would like to recommend the following individuals at the middle school uh, as spring athletic positions. Joel Schroeder, eighth grade boys lacrosse, Joe Doan, middle school track, David Kinsella, middle school track, Scott Lavie, expansion baseball, Steve Martin, seventh grade softball, uh, Elizabeth McClavick, seventh grade lacrosse, Beth Courier, Ann Carney, and Jake Jasson, all seventh grade, uh, seventh grade lacrosse, who I assume these individuals are volunteering their time. That's why there is a zero next to the hours. I think they're putting plenty of hours in, but they're just not getting paid for it. Um, and then uh, also under athletic nominations, uh, spring nominations, um, Ben Bluen, JV Boys Lacrosse, uh, and Zach Herbert, JV Boys Lacrosse. Okay, do we have a motion to accept these recommendations? Um, Elaine? 
Uh, I mo move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for the spring uh, athletic fee positions um, as noted. Okay. And a second. Jennifer? All those in favor? Seven zero. Second is the consideration of the recommendations to co-curricular fee positions. And there's one co-curricular fee stipend recommendation that is at the high school, uh, Wynn Phillips for the high school literary magazine. Okay. A motion to accept this recommendation. Elaine? I move that we accept uh, the recommendation for Wynn Phillips as the literary magazine co-curricular position. Okay. And a second. Kathy? All those in favor? 7-0. Next on our list um, is a consideration of the negotiated agreement between the Cape Elizabeth School Board and the Cape Elizabeth Education Association. Motion. Um, George? Yeah, I, would, um, I would move that the board accept the proposed negotiated agreement between the Cape Elizabeth School Board and the Cape Elizabeth Education Association. This is specifically the teacher's contract. Um, and a second? Susan? All those in favor? Can, can I just make a comment before we vote? Yes. Yeah. just want to um, just acknowledge the, uh, the work that went into uh, the creation of this contract. Um, we had this year, um, in negotiating this new three-year contract, adopted a collaborative-based bargaining approach. Um, and it was really, truly amazing uh, to see what can be accomplished um, when everyone at the bargaining table um, has the same goal. And that was very clear, that goal of improving education in Cape Elizabeth. As I said, it is a three-year contract. And I just want to express my thanks to um, the uh, sort of fellow negotiators uh, on the school board um, to the superintendent and certainly uh, my thanks and appreciation uh, to the negotiating team uh, for the Cape Elizabeth um, Education Association. Okay, thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Um, all those in favor? Seven, zero. Uh, next is the considera consideration of nominations to teachers positions in which we're hiring now. Yes, we have a few uh, nominations for teaching positions for the 2003-2004 school year. Um, the first uh, is a special education teacher at uh, Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, I would like to nominate Elaine Brassard. Okay. Do we have a motion for the superintendent's nomination? Uh, Kathy? I move that we accept the nomination of Elaine Brassard for the special ed position. At high school. Okay, and a second. George? All those in favor? Six, seven, seven, zero. Also, um, at the high school, another special education teacher, uh, Mia Jordan. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept this recommendation? Susan? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for special education teacher at the high school, Mia Jordan. Okay, and a second. George. All those in favor? Seven, zero. Next. And next is a special education teacher at uh, Pine Cove Elementary School, uh, Jacqueline Petrillo. Motion for this recommendation, Kevin. With great pleasure. Uh, uh, that, that was your motion. Okay. <laughs> Second. <laughs> um, Susan. Okay. All those in favor? All those in favor? <laughs> Seven zero. <laughs> and lastly, um, general classroom music choral director at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Rebecca Bean. Okay, do we have a recommendation to accept this? Susan? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for um, general classroom music choral director Re Rebecca Bean at Cape Elizabeth Middle School. 
Okay, thank you. Second, George. All those in favor? <laughs> Seven zero. Now we'll move on to um, consideration of, of more policies for first reading. Okay. All right. Um, you should have had in your packet policies for first reading, and we'll go through them um, hopefully in the order that they are in the list. Um, first one is policy ECB, pest management in school facilities and on school grounds. Any comments? Just a comment. Are we, are we going to be designating it one individual to, to have all this information? Or um, had that been? I think it had been somewhat informally discussed <laughs> that there would be one. Who's there wasn't be in a charge of the, the pest? <laughs> <Me? Yeah. laughs> there, will be a, there will be a person designated. As to keep a, the records and right. the, you. And we have to. <laughs> Are you volunteering? <laughs> um, no, and according to the policy, we will have to designate, and we do have, even now, um, you know, but someone will have to be responsible to make sure <laughs> we don't have pests, I guess. <laughs> In that case, can I have the job? <laughs> And I think a lot of it has to do, as you know, is this spraying and those kinds of things and when you do it and what you can and can't do and mm -hmm. someone will have to be designated. We have not had that discussion yet, uh, whether that would be, um, for instance, Keith Wakeham uh, in charge of custodians and, or Ernie McVeigh. But um, so that decision hasn't been made yet, but we will be designated so one person. Yeah. Okay. Next. Um, the next policy that we, um, the policy committee is recommending for first reading is professional staff hiring policy GCF. Before, just so that I can kind of uh, let you know where we are with the, and there are several that have to do with um, uh, hiring procedures. You have several um, policies that Susan will be reading that will, that will be the policy part of our hiring procedures. You also have in your packet uh, a professional staff hiring procedures handbook. Um, the policies will be, and as you, as you go through that, will be part of that handbook, but there are several pieces of that handbook that will just be guidelines that we'll use. But I did want to give you uh, the handbook so that you could see how the policies fit into that into that handbook. And they're also, they are labeled the proposed policy, um, and some of them may be new, uh, and some are just a rewrite of policies that we have already in place. Um, just so you can distinguish what's in the policy and what's in the, the handbook. Okay. Um, the next policy in the policy is um, GA personnel goals. Any comments? Okay. Um, the next policy in the policy is recruiting and hiring of administrative staff. Comments? Procedure for recruiting and hiring administrative staff. Comments? Okay. Um, Okay, and then the next thing in your packet should be, um, as Tom mentioned, the um, guidelines for hiring. Any, any comments on that? I mean, it's something that we will be approving, right? Yeah, we would like approval of the handbook, although the handbook itself is not policy and probably sh is, shouldn't be listed as policy. Um, but we would like, just as we did with the athletic, um, several of the guidelines, we would like approval so as you, um, and would bring it back to the next meeting, um, any questions you might have in those, the handbook, we, we do think it will, it will put more emphasis on the importance of having those procedures in place um, to have a school board approval of the handbook, although it is not policy and probably should be listed under a separate category. Um, I just have a question about the handbook. Is this how it will be presented? Well, it'll be in a binder, okay. but, right. All, okay, so all, the all the administrators will have it. There will also be an appendix that will have some of the forms also that are included. Okay. 
i have one question under the professional staff hiring item number c that advertising positions shall be over the largest appropriate geographical area with minimum advertising for the position being in-house posting so does that mean that that if a position becomes available it is up to the administrator they can do something as geographically small as simply posting it to the largest appropriate geographical area meaning what i'm not really clear all advertising if you look at the guidelines would the administrator wouldn't do it would all go through the central office so that any advertising in-house and the external advertising will all go through my office so the administrators wouldn't be advertising any positions so the the decision as to whether there would be newspaper ads or a search that would go outside of the current school system would be left up to whom that would be left up to the superintendent now if you look at the policy there also is a statement that we will and when a position is open advertise to the greatest extent possible in local newspapers so that that statement there is that that is a bare minimum but the normal course of events would be that there would be advertising outside of the school system isn't that a requirement of the contract the teacher contract that it be inside inside the house yeah contractually we do need to we do need to post in-house right any other questions comments okay um the next policy is the teacher job share policy and um this was actually a policy that we've changed to incorporate some um a change that was made during the negotiations is that right okay any comments on that question on that okay and um the last one was the athletic policy evaluation of coaches um this addresses i think a comment that elaine made earlier in that the the um objective of the policy committee was to allow us more flexibility as we move forward in improving our evaluation of coaches and and probably eventually staff as well we just thought that it, it was appropriate to have more flexibility in that process any comments or questions on that okay that's it thank you thank you um next is the is a proposal to continue um a job share at pond cove this year we ent in entered into a job share with the uh, pond cove um, guidance position uh, it was something that that worked well for each of the individuals um, due to other work situations and uh, traveling situations and other jobs um, all job shares are for a one year um, and this is a request to renew that job share which uh, tom eismer and i both support that do we have a motion to accept this um, proposal i'm <clears throat> I move that we accept the proposal to continue the job share position at Pond Cove School. Okay, thank you. A second. Jennifer? All in favor? Seven. Zero. Next is sup the superintendent's nomination of teachers to continuing contracts. Okay, you have in front of you a list of teachers. Um, eligible for continuing contract status for the 2003-2004 school year um, and I would like to just read through read through the list um, at Pond Cove School grade three Holly Hertel at the middle school Aaron Filio Carly Bean Sally Connolly Lisa Leonard Brian Fisero and Allison Hawks at the high school Gretchen McNulty and Joycelyn Bowden uh, system-wide position William Cook okay do we have um, a motion to accept this nomination can't I move that we accept the nominations for continuing contract as listed okay and a second 
Lane. All those in favor? Seven, zero. And lastly, we have a nomination of teachers to second year probationary contracts. And those teachers uh, recommended for second year uh, contracts included Pond Cove School, Eric Nielsen, uh, Karen Rand, Patricia Wright, and Karen Niehoff. And those are the two job share uh, personnel we have. At the middle school, uh, Megan Crabtree, Anne Marie Dion, Cheryl Joyes, Sarah Kinsella, and Evan Solander. At the high school, Erica Stump Bergeron, Allison Coulter, Courtney Farrell, Tom Mozat, Michael O'Brien, Dawn Pons, and Morton Soul. System wide positions as occupational therapists, Christine Kennedy and Delbert Peavy. Okay. Uh, Dr. Fazola. I made a mistake on the list. Karen Rand shouldn't be on there. Okay. Karen, Karen Niehoff. Guidance. She is on there, isn't she? So Karen Rand is not supposed Karen, to be. It's supposed to be Karen Niehoff instead of Karen Rand. We read Karen Niehoff. Okay. Yeah. But Karen Rand shouldn't be. She shouldn't be on the list. Okay. She's not on the list. She's not on the list. She'll get the job. That was my mistake. I apologize. She was not on the list. Yeah, she was on the list. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, do we have a recommendation to support the nomination of teachers to second year probationary status? Um, Kevin. I move that we accept the superintendent's uh, nominations for second year probationary contracts. Thank you. Uh, second? Well, Kathy? Sure. Do you have a comment? Yes. And this applies to the earlier group of uh, teachers as well? I still haven't met most of these people. If I saw them on the street, I still wouldn't know who the heck they are. And I again repeat my request that some sort of arrangement be made so that this board can meet our teachers. Okay, thank you. Um, all those in favor? Seven, zero. And tonight is um, Susan's last tonight up here. Um, and I, I, we want to thank her for her three years of service to the school board. She certainly has worked very hard and contributed tremendously to school board policies. Um, I think our, our policy committee has never been quite as organized. Um, and under her direction, they've really accomplished a great deal this year. Um, we would like to, however, have a special presentation for Susan at our next school board meeting. So we ask her to come back um, in the audience next month. And by the same token, I'd like to welcome um, Ann Belden, um, who has sat very patiently through our meeting tonight which I think is one of the longest ones we've had in a while. Um, and we are all looking forward to having you uh, next month join our board. And now Marty, we can, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be here next month, Susan. I'm sorry, I, I won't be here. But on the other hand, I'm delighted that I won't be here because <laughs> I am taking my annual mental health break far, far away. <coughs> And it's been a delight working with you. And I really appreciate your efforts on, on the, uh, the policy committee. I hope somebody can, uh, you've left some big shoes to fill. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you uh, between now and then. But uh, I did think this was, my, I guess, my last opportunity for a public comment. So thanks very much. It's been fun. Thank you. OK, are there any other comments from school board members? Or you can hold it until next month. Okay. Okay. Um, and then lastly, um, we will have a, a request to enter executive session to discuss contract negotiations. Can um, I ask with whom these negotiations? Uh, uh, custodians reopener for um, benefits. 
then I would respectfully request that I be excused. Okay. Um, do, and do we need, is Pauline, will Pauline be at this meeting? Yeah, Pauline. Okay, and we request that Pauline be there as well. Um, <laughs> you just get lucky. <laughs> Um, it, it should, Pauline. It should only go till eleven o'clock or so. We should be, we should be out by then. Okay. Can we have a motion then to end public session and enter executive session? I move that we end public session and enter executive session to discuss contract negotiations. Okay. And a second, George. Um, all those in favor? Seven. Kevin, hand up. Seven zero. I'm not going to be there. So. Um, I have a quick question on the dates to remember here. Oh, I forgot oh, the dates. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, do we are we doing an organizational meeting on the tenth as well? Just the. In the past, you usually have it before the regular school board meeting, so right. we, I should I have listed it. I'm it's sorry. going to be part of the finance committee? No, don't, it should have been usually, listed separately at We at usually six do something. it after the swearing in at the town council. Is that correct? Well, uh, that's the last couple of years, they've done, you've done it on the Tuesday night before the finance committee oh, meeting. Oh, okay. Um, so is that what everyone wishes to do then? Yeah. In, instead of um, 6.30 for our finance committee meeting, can we make it 6 o'clock? So is the finance committee really going to be... Do you need an hour? Do you need an hour next, next month? It might be a little longer. So you, you'll need a full hour? Well, we, we, we will be bringing up Oh, yes, okay. So we probably need to go at six then. So okay. is that executive session? No. 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 No? Okay. It's a public meeting. For the reorganization? Yeah. No, no, no. For the. Um, There'll be a portion of em that if it's a negotiation. Yeah, you'll the have, negotiations to, part you'll have to go into executive, executive session. session for that piece, yes. But at 6 o'clock, that will be the public okay. piece of the meeting. So 6 o'clock on June 10th for the finance subcommittee meeting, which we will also do organizational changes for the school board okay. committee. So, Kevin, you're not going to be there? Nope. Oh. Oh, wait till you see where you <laughs> no, get I think, I think last year. I wouldn't hold my breath because I wouldn't be, I won't be sworn in either. So. But I think last year, Kevin, you, you informed us of what committees you wanted to be involved with. So I think you missed it. That was this last year. year. This is this year. Oh. Uh. Pass control. <laughs> <laughs> pass, pass, pass control. <laughs> so we will get you before you leave. <laughs> okay. Um, then, then just quickly, let me mention all the meetings that, that I neglected to um, remind everyone. The next school board meeting, school board workshop, will be May 27th at 7 p.m. in the high school library. Uh, we will be discussing the superintendent's evaluation and the school board evaluation. Mm. Okay. Um, and the policy subcommittee meeting Wednesday, June 4th at 12 noon. Um, the finance committee, uh, the finance subcommittee meeting we just discussed at 6 o'clock instead of 6.30 in the William Jordan conference room, followed by our regular school board meeting at 7.30 on June 10th. And that's it.